Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone, we are from Group One, and now our group will present about our topic that is fern. Here we have a list of content that we will discuss today. First is structure and function of fern organ. Second is reproduction. And third is distinguish from one another villa or kind of seedless vascular plant. Before we know about structure of fern, we should know about fern first. Fern is flowerless or seedless plant because they reproduce by spores. And then fern have two pace in their life cycle, which are sporophyte pace and then gametophyte pace. And we can find this plant on the humid place or high growth pit and then stick on other plant or epipit and then in the fresh water or hydropit. Next, we have a structure of fern. As we can see in this picture, fern have three main parts, which are root and then front or leaves. And one more is spore. For the root, in gametophyte phase, the root is a rhizome. And then in the sporophyte phase, the root is become to root like this. The function of the root is to carry out the water from the soil. Next is front. Front have a stem and have a leaves. For the stem in gametophyte phase is a protalium. Protalium is like a sheet of paper like this. And then the function of protalium is can do photosynthesis. It is a root of gametophyte paste. Okay. Uh, in sporophyte paste, the stem is become true stem and have a vascular like silum and flum. And for the leaf, it's only occur in sporophyte base that have two function of leaves. First one is tropophyll. It is for do photosynthesis, and then the second one is sporophyll leaf. The function of sporophyll leaf is to produce the spore. And in the back of leaves like this, the sporophyll leaf, it is the sporophyll leaf, and that have a sorus and sporangium, and then sporangium is contain the spore. Hello everyone, my name is Safa, and here I'm going to explain about the reproduction of a fern through the diagram about the life cycle of a fern. So, actually, a fern can do two types of reproduction, which is sexual or generative and asexual or vegetative. So, let's take a look to the diagram. As we can see here, a fern are having sporangium on the side of their leaves. And the sporangium can doing the asexual reproduction or the vegetative one by doing a meiosis to release spores. After that, the spores will develop into a small gametophyte, or we can call it as protalium, which contain of only archegonium or only antheridium, or contain of both of archegonium and antheridium. This archegonium will release egg or ovum, and the anteridium one will release sperms. After that, 
a fern will doing sexual reproduction or degenerative one by doing a fertilization to become a zygote. After that, the zygote will develop into a new sporophyte or a new generation of a fern which will become mature in the future and redo this life cycle. Next about the metagenesis of fern, as we can see here, uh, the diagram is just the same with what I already explained before about the life cycle of fern. So from the spore until the ovum and spermatozoid, the cells are haploid, and from the zygote until the sporangium, the cells are diploid. And then from the protelium until the ovum and sperm, the phase of life is gametophyte generation. And from the zygote until spore, the phase of life is sporophyte generation. From that, we can conclude that the fern has the dominant life phase in the sporophyte generation. Next, we will discuss about uh, classification of ferns. First is Silatina class. Silatinoclas is a primitive fern. They have no leaves yet. The example of Silatinoclas is a uh, Silatum nudum. Uh, here, each yellow knob consists of three fused sporangia. So the sporangium itself is formed at the north armpit of the stem. The stem itself, a uh, lack of vascular tissue, so they maybe uh, may have resulted from the evolutionary reduction of leaves, so they have no leaves yet. Most of the members are extinct. Uh, second is Lycopodini class, or RIS. With fern. The leaves of wisp fern are hair shaped or scale shaped. Leaf position itself is spread and the stem is like wire. The example of Lycopodine class is Selaginella, and another example is Lycopodium. The sporangium is composed in strobilus. The strobilus itself form in the end of branch. Sporophyte have a bright stem with many small leaves. Many lycopene are epipit. Epipit itself, uh, the plant use other plant as substrate but they are not a parasite. It is a Lycopodinae class. Okay, my name is Tasha Fadilha. I'm from IPS 2018. I will give you another classification of fern. There are Ecocetinae class or horsetail fern. Why it called horsetail? Because the leaves are scale shape and transparent. The seed of the leaves is coralloid. The stem is hollow and segmented or jointed. As you can see in the picture, the leaf is scale and also the stem is jointed. Sporangium is composed in strabilus form like a horsetail. Example is Equisetum debut. Next is Felicine class. The leaf has large dimension. Leaf veins are parallel. In the picture, both is parallel and in the first picture is a large dimension. The young leaf roll or cucinatus, serous is formed under the leaf surface. The ones living on land make sporangium in sorus, while those living in water make sporangium and sporocarpia. Example is platycerium bifurcatum. As Planium nidus, like in first pictures, Adiantum cuneantum, Azola pinata, Dixonia antarctica. 
Oreo Teris Felix Mas and the last the area of Teris Aspect like in the second picture. Okay, that's all from our group. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope it will be used for your knowledge. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.